Hello everybody and welcome to Scalable Scripts YouTube channel. In this video you will learn how to create a multilingual site using Vue.js as the frontend. If you need to translate your website, this is the right tutorial for you, because we will do the translation implementation step by step and by using different examples. The backend will be done in Python, but for this check the previous video at this channel. Let's create now the Vue.js app. To create a Vue.js project we need to first create the Vue CLI. Let's copy this code and paste it into the terminal. After the installation is done, let's clear the console and write view create view dash frontend. I will pick the default settings and that's it. We created the view frontend project. Now we need to go to the folder and run npm run serve. Open the browser and write localhost port 8080. This is our view project. Let's make some changes now. First go to public index.html and add the bootstrap link. Then go to components and remove the hello world file. Then create header.view file. Each view component is composed by three parts, template, scripts and styles. We will not add styles for now. In the template tag let's add this HTML and in the scripts tag we will just export this component. Now go to app.view and remove this HTML and import the header component that we just created. In the export default, we will remove the name and the components and we will add this component as app minus header. Let's add the component to the header now using the name that we just created. App minus header and as last step remove the styles and open the browser. We can see that the drop down looks fine. Now we have to set the language to local storage. First, let's add a change listener to select tag that will call a handle change function with the event inside. In the export, add a method called methods and inside that we will add a handle change function. All the functions we created should be added inside methods. Now write local storage set item lang event dot target dot value. Then we will reload the page with window dot location dot reload. Now open the browser, clean the local storage and change the language. It seems we got an error and it happened because we forgot to add a dollar sign in front of event here. Now if we open the browser we will see that local storage is getting the correct value but still our drop down is staying in English. Now we have to make sure that our drop down stays the same as our local storage value. Same as methods we need to add the data property now to get the current language let's create a variable called lang which is equal to local storage get item lang or English. Then we need to return it as an object that contains this variable. Now in the select line write v minus model equals the lang variable we created. Let's add a comma here and see it in the browser. Now we can see that the drop down changed its value when we change the language. Let's create the post component now. Inside the components folder create posts.view. Let's write the template and script tags. Inside the template and these lines of code and inside the scripts type export default. Now we need to install Axios to make an HTTP request to our API. Let's import Axios and send a GET request when the component is mounted. Create the mounted method inside export default. Inside this method we will send a get request to localhost 5000. 
slash posts and we'll console log the result. Now let's import post component. Go to app.view and inside the components add app minus posts posts. We need to import posts from components slash posts.view. In the end, we will add app minus posts to template tags. If we open the browser and open the network tab, we will see that we send a GET request to our API. Next, we have to loop and display the posts. To loop the posts, we have first to create the post variable. In view, the variable should be added inside the data function. We will initialize it as an empty array. Now, inside our post request, I will remove the console log and write this.posts equals response.data. Now, let's go to our template and write a for loop. F for post in posts and we will just show the title and description. If we open the browser, we will see that the posts are displayed correctly. Now, let's display the images. We have to import the images inside the assets directory. Let's write the image tag now, but we can't get the source directly. So we have to call the getPostImage function to get the source. Now let's add methods and inside methods we will write the function getPostImage. To get the source, we need to require the image path, so write return require the image path plus the image name. If we open the browser, we will see an error. That happens because we forgot to add a slash after the images. If we open it again, we will see that the images are open correctly. Now we will translate the posts. Translating with the headers is pretty easy with Axios. Go to main.js and import Axios. First, let's refactor the URLs. Write axios.default.base URL equals to localhost 5000. This will make the URLs much more cleaner now. Now, let's create a lang variable which is equal to local storage dot get item lang and add as default the en. In the end, write axios.defaults.headers accept minus language equals the lang variable we created. If you open the browser now and change the language, we will see that the posts are translated. Now let's use the front-end translations. I will use this package now to translate the front-end. Let's install it. Copy this line of code and paste it in our terminal. In the assets directory, I imported all the translations we will use in this tutorial. Let's configure the package now. Create a file called i18.js and now start importing all the JSON translations. We need also to import view i18n and view now write view use view i18n. In the end, we need to export view i18n with these parameters. Locale, which is local storage, get item length or en, and messages, which are the JSONs that we imported. Finally, go to main.js and import i18n from i18n. Write i18n before the render parameter. Now we are done with the configuration. Let's go to posts, component and add this HTML. We will now translate this by text. Replace the text with curly curly dollar t and add inside the by string. Open the browser and change the language. We can see that the by text get translated. I added the translation for input placeholder here. 
but now we need then when we click the buy button to send a post request to the server. Let's do it now. Let's add a click listener for the button that will call a handle click function with a current post inside. Let's scroll through the methods and add the handle click function. For now, I will just console log the ID. Open the browser and click the buy button. We can see that the post ID is shown. Now inside data, let's add a new parameter called quantities and I will initialize it as an empty array. Now in the view model, add quantities and post ID inside. This will keep track of all the quantities of the post. Now go to the handle click function and replace the console log with quantities and add the post ID inside. Open the browser, add the quantity and click buy. We can see that the correct quantity is shown. Now we are ready to send a POST request to the server. Write axios POST POSTS dot ID and the data will be the quantity. Then in the end we will console log the result. We can see that we have an error. We should change the dot here into a plus. Let's try it again and now we can see that the request is sent successfully and we are getting a congratulations message. Now let's translate the response. Create a variable called res which is response.data. Now write alert this dot dollar i 18 n dot t and inside write res dot message. This is the way this package translates the message. If we open the browser, we will see an alert and the text is in German. So it works correctly. Let's do the same thing for the error case. Let's try it now on the browser and you can see that everything works fine. Let's add styles for the Arabic language now. Go to main.js and write document.documentElement.lang equals to lang. This will set the lang attribute in the HTML tag. Now go to app.view and add the style tag. All the tags after the HTML tag with the lang attribute of Arabic will have a text line of write. You can add more styles here, but I will keep it simple. Now open the browser and you can see that the Arabic language is aligned to the right and all the other languages are aligned to the left. Thank you for watching our video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming programming tutorials. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. See you in the next video.